subscribe to my channel, all of that, all of that. So today's video actually isn't like a review of any movie, isn't a rant, like it's a rant, but it's not based on anything specific, it's just a rant on like the movie industry, right? Because and this rant is based off of an article I read from the PRO of the Black Star International Film Festival. So if you don't know what that is, it's a film festival that's done in Ghana. And this year will be its third like film festival. So if you're in Ghana around the time, I think they do around July, August. But if you're in Ghana around that time, please check out the Black Star International Film Festival. It's really amazing. So this video is actually based on the article that the PRO for the film festival wrote. And I went back to actually think about it and then you know, do research, read up on it, and I decided to do this. So today's video is about like the role of our cultural leaders in the movie industry. And for anybody who like, why do they like why do we need them in the movie industry? It's simple. You see, a lot of the arts is based in culture. Movies is based in culture. So if the cultural leaders don't have a role or have a say in what happens, I mean that's what's going to happen because there's been so much conversation and counter conversation on the state of the movie industry. The Ghana movie industry is dead. No, it's not dead. It's dying. No, it's not dying. It's dying. It's coming to die. You know, this whole narrative of the current state of the movie industry is very frustrating, right? And that's my thing. Ghana as a country, or let me just put Ghana as a country. I don't even talk about Africa because I can't speak for the rest of the African countries. But Ghana as a country, we don't have a cultural agenda. You might ask, what's a cultural agenda? Well, you know how in China, in Japan, in India, in a lot of the Asian countries, you can't just put anything on the screen. Like, they vet what comes on the screen. Even what's shown in the cinemas. There are some movies that will never be shown in China. Like Deadpool. Deadpool will never be shown in China. And it's no skin off their nose. Because first of all, that's not, that's not how they roll. Like, if you can't like amend to what they want, they're not going to allow you to show whatever it is on their cinemas, on their screens. Same as South Korea. Like South Korea, a lot of the stuff that's shown on their TV sets is South Korean produced. And I don't know how people be like, oh no, but still there's so much influx of foreign movies. Yes, there's a lot of foreign novellas. But even before like right now with the whole rampant foreign telenovelas, we still had it like 20 years ago. Even though 20 years ago I was young, but I like there's still a lot of like Foreign telenovelas like Pando Sias Mia, that show ran for as long as I can remember. And even when I was tired, I was still running it. But that's my thing, right? We have so much placed the movie industry on the government. They are always waiting on, oh, the government should set structures. And yes, it's true. We need structures in the movie industry. Yes, we need, you know, incentives. We need all of those things. But why should they always be on the government? Why should we always go and see, oh my god, the government has to do it? It looks like after 16 years or 18 years, like say from 2000 to now, it looks like after 18 years, the government doesn't really put as much stock into the movie industry as we want to. Because just this year, the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts, they decided to put out a Jaco TV and I think another TV. And I was like, I felt like, yeah, it's good. It's a good thing. But why did they need another TV channel? Like this is supposed to be another TV channel. Why not just put a system in place whereby it will be like, let's have 60% local content and then 40% foreign content, or let's just do 50-50. But instead of like, but doing a whole different channel that, I don't even know how I'm going to access that channel, it's just weird for me. And I'm also going to bring it down to this. The Otun 4 or 32, Tobi Afede, the Yabungura, the Gamanche, all these people are, you know, cultural leaders. And there's a thing, you can, like they individually, they can help grow the art. Because movies aren't just for entertainment, movies also set agendas, movies also for propaganda. Because if you're just going to be like, oh, we need the government or anything, why not? I'm just saying, like, this is like, it's like the tool for like to the Asante, like, if you want people to say your story, if you want people to tell your stories, why don't you like fund those stories? Like, let it be from the office. Of the Otun for you have like a cultural office that isn't just for the tourism, but it's also for movies because nothing sells faster than a movie. Because people will use two hours to watch a movie and even move to go to that tourism site. 
Because yes, tourism should people should tour more. Great, that's all well and good. But here's a point where people watch a lot of things more end up when they're sitting in church or they're watching a movie, in their house they're watching movies. Even wherever they are, people are watching movies, watching short videos and everything. So instead of like waiting for whoever it is, a great someone or someone out there to give the movie, why don't the cultural leaders start funding their own movies? Like start doing a movie fund because when you go to a tune for tune for set to like there's a fund for movie filmmakers. So when you come, you submit your idea. If they like it, you know they will collaborate. If you decide that maybe you what you want to do is just you know history, so there should be historical movies. But at the end of the day, it's still fundable to tune for. It's great. Like they will even have that backing, like that prestige back that oh I got the tune for like I got maybe ten thousand dollars from the tune for whatever fan to do this movie. Cause I I don't know why. Up till now, people don't see like the potential in the movie industry because in America and Europe, right? Believe it or not, the CIA, the FBI, they fund so many movies in Hollywood because you need your agenda to go out there. You need people to think a certain way about some kind of people. The only way in which you're going to do that is through fans because if you want me to say nice things about you and give me like 10,000 cities, you know, like if you can't give me like 100,000 cities to say nice things about you or to write up nice stuff about you, I will. So why don't you put that same energy in the movie industry? I mean, when the elections are coming up, NDC, MPP, you people want people to vote for you. Do something, like do it in a movie. Instead of these adverts where some are coming, like, instead of these adverts, that is so obvious that it's a bought and paid for advert. Do a movie. I don't know, let it be about some election, something that goes awry and we have to, I don't know, struggle and fight. But at the end of the day, trying to wait on the government to do this whole movie thing, it doesn't seem like it's working. And it's very frustrating, right? Because you find people like, there are so many hiccups, there are so many like hills you have to go over just to produce a movie and just for the movie to sell. So why don't we go to like, the traditional leaders, because the Volta region chief, Tobia Fede, maybe you want, you maybe think that Airways are misrepresented in the media, maybe think that Airways have more stories. You know, the money that you're going to use to buy, like maybe a new Rolls Royce, a new Land Cruiser, but you believe, like use that money to find a movie. You won't have your Rolls Royce, but you have like a brand spanking new movie that will serve your agenda really well. But two for, I mean, you have so many cars, you can sell one of the cars to fund a movie about, I don't know, Prempe, the war that Prempe was that he went to Seychelles and he came back, the Yasantua war, how uh, Confanoche brought the Golden Stool, and I know Kuma would have done their, like, they've done their own version, but this is like an upgrade version of what Kuma has done. Like, you get it? Like, there has to be a collaborated effort, because if you are just going to leave it and then it's like everybody's in their corner trying to do something it doesn't really work and because if we are going to leave our stories for it not to be told it will shock us that white people will do our stories for us and we'll be watching people as we say tree but they're not Ghanaians we will have Chadwick Boseman saying Patrick is saying now and no and you will be there like what's happening how can they do something like that but you see because we don't take charge of our own culture, don't take charge of our own stories. We'll be here and people will say our stories for us. And also, this whole thing where people go like, oh, what sort of like, what sort of movies are they going to do? There have been books. Okay, that's also part of the cultural agenda because we don't adapt books. It's like, when books are there, okay, books are there and then the movies are there. Right now in Hollywood, they're adapting most books into movies. Like, it's rather such a thing right now. So there are lots of books there. The Child of Malam Ilya by Muhammad Ben Abdullah, uh, and what is there. And that, these are all things to adapt, and these are all cultural things that you can, you know, put on the big screen. Because it's so weird when you hear some story about Kwame Nkrumah, and you're like, hey, wait, where's the documentary? Where's the film? And like, oh no, there's no documentary, there's no film. And then like, really, really, like the government, I get it. You don't care about the creative arts industry as you want us to believe or maybe you do and you don't really do care about it but this is my thing black panther has shown us that africa is really going to be the next target of like a lot of movie focus 
a lot of people are going to focus on Africa because right now we have like a young population and this young population are want to see a lot of visual content. So if we are not going to give them the visual content, people are going to come from outside and give us the visual content. Because when most of the documentaries that are on the history of Ghana weren't really financed by Ghanaians, but financed by British, by Germans and by Americans. You know the same Americans that toppled your first president. They're the ones documentaries for you and they're the ones that are going to set the culture, they're the ones going to set the conversation. So this is my thing, we have to take charge of our conversation because we are going to leave the conversation to like just up in the air and waiting for whoever it is. Like honestly, honestly, we will just be there and we wouldn't know what happened to it and we'll just be complaining and complaining. So I get it to many of the traditional rulers. Maybe you see you think that people doing movies they're just you know riffraffs or they're not serious in life or anything. But if you want to get a message across, it's very effective like putting in a movie. Right? That's not a book where people have to read words. It's just a movie that you know that is there that people have to actually watch it. Because if you don't do that, right, we might be misrepresented in the movie. And if say I I need like Info on like to do a movie because there have been many times whereby you need info to do a movie on, say, get a can I go call it? Then you go to maybe the Walter region and you're trying to even look for like someone to tell you the story or just to fact check what you're going to put out there. It's so difficult because a lot of people look at you with suspicion. So imagine I'm trying to do a movie on can I go call it? I'm doing all this and I like I hit a stone wall. And I said, you know what, forget them, I'm going to come back and do the movie my own way. And I, and I do this movie, I'm able to get the fans, and I put it out there. And then after I watch the movie, I become angry, how dare you represent him like this, and no, it wasn't really like that, and blah blah blah. You see, it will get to a point where, when we become angry about how we are portrayed, we can't have anything to say about it, because we had the chance to get in front of the story, we had the chance to get in front of how it's produced. Because if... I don't know why I keep on saying the tune for, but it's like he's like the most popular monarchy royal in Ghana. But say a tune for, right? The Asante Kingdom, the Akan Kingdom, you have like so many stories. Imagine if they like, put down like 100,000 to produce say, three of the stories. And I mean, your tune for, if you're going to back the story and let it be premiered in London and things, people will listen to you. Because first of all, you have the money. Secondly, you have like the status to make it work. Because you think the British monarchy, they don't fund movies that make them look good. Ah, uh, they do. You think the CIA, the movies they fund, they don't make them look good. They do. So if you want to, if you want to look good, if you want your legacy to live on, books are there. But how many books do we really write? So think about investing in movies. Let yourself look good in movies. Fund it. Because honestly, I, I don't know how like most of the actors when they play because I'm tired of the like, reading and the government. Because look, honestly, we have to like get a consensus that they, they might never ever put structures in place. So maybe you can start your own. We will start it. But then there has to be a first step, right? Because trust me on this, very soon our story will be told by like Chadwick Boseman or Michael B. Jordan, even though he's like fine and everything, but he will be like Kim Prempen and will just be angry at the cinema that how dare he, he doesn't know our rich culture and blah blah blah. And you see, you can't push out like this when you had the chance and you didn't do anything about it. And I get it, doing movies is expensive and I get it, movies don't pay in Ghana and I get it, nobody will watch it, but you see, we have to make the first effort, make the first step, you know, do something. Because if there's ever shown, and I see that, oh, well, you know, this, this is being done. It's great, because there's a movie coming up, The Barrel of Kojo, in which I'm really hoping I get to interview Blitz. But there's a movie that it talks about uh, Galamse, but then it's a movie within a movie. I haven't seen a trailer, but then I've been following the movie, I've been following the progress keenly. Now, this is an example. And he even kickstarted, like he even did a kickstarter for his movie because, I mean, he, there was more like, there's not a place that he can go for the movie. So, on kickstart, he got the money. 
But then, like, let's just, he's just one person. There are other stories. Let's set our own cultural agenda. Otherwise, we'll get to a point where our stories will be told by people with our skin color, but they are not us. And I get it, we are all one black people. But then, still, still, when we see a Nigerian trying to speak tree, even though we get excited, they're still really like, you can't speak tree how I, as how I can speak it. So let's just put that whole same conscious thing to do our movies. Because honestly, very soon, our stories will be told to us by people who aren't us. And we can't, at that point, you can't be angry. You can't even like say a word because then what? What can you say about it? They are saying it how they want it. They have the money to do it. Because even if you are saying that you don't have enough money, you can start with like $20,000. You can start with $100,000. I mean, how much is a Rolls Royce, right? Right? Or like a Land Cruiser. But my point is, let it be there. Like, instead of like going to the government in which they won't help us, because at this point in time, if they were going to, they would. But instead of going to the government, traditional rulers, this is your chance. You know, they put your name behind it. So that when they are being like, hey, what did you do? You can be like, first of all, that thing, it's mine. Because my mom keeps on saying it. Instead of trying to do something, start something and put your name on it so that it will live on forever and ever. Like, quick one answer, like an answer sem, so I don't know. Any one of you who can decide to start the movement and you name it after yourself and will forever remember you and thank you for it. So, anyways, I'm done with this video. This is my rant, like my 10 minutes or less rant, right? And let me know what you think about it. Do you think that like it's necessary to I don't know wait on the government to revive our movie industry that apparently it's not dead, but then it's dead. But then people think it's not dead because you know most of the actors are acting. That's like the weirdest thing for me. But anyways, I'm done with this video. My name is Safala Abi once again. Do subscribe to my channel. Do leave me your comments below. Send me your emails about what you want me to talk about next or what you want me to see next. Because I've been getting a lot of requests to watch different stuff, right? And I'm very excited about it. Even though I've been through a lot, but I'm still excited about it. What's happening? So I'll see you in my next video. You should like subscribe to my channel and then, you know, we'll do this some other time. Bye. Okay?